Now, as you may recall, back in 2019, I actually did a full-length video of the Tommy Jarvis trilogy from Friday the 13th, which consists of the 4th, 5th, and 6th films. Well, since today is the 40th anniversary of the 4th film, I thought I'd go ahead and do a solo re-review of it. Here's my re-review of my favorite installment of the franchise, Friday the 13th, The Final Chapter. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dual, better known to as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a solo re-review of the 1984 slasher flick, Friday the 13th, the final chapter, released by Paramount, directed by Joseph Zio, and produced by Frank Mancuso Jr. Starring Kimberly Beck, Corey Feldman, Crispin Glover, Pierre Barton, and more. Of course, this is a sequel to Part 3 and the fourth installment. The film picks up immediately after the events of the previous film. The plot follows a presumed dead Jason Voorhees who escapes from the morgue and returns to Crystal Lake to continue his killing spree. This film marks the debut of the character Tommy Jarvis, who would make further appearances in two sequels and relay Mia establishing him as Jason's arch M. If you have not seen my re-review of the third film, click on that little card there. I won't, you don't have to go to the playlist, so I'm just going to let you go to the third part if you would like to see that, in case you might miss it, or see it again. Okay. Now, much like part three, the film was originally supposed to be the final installment in the series. And Mancuso Jr. wanted to conclude the series as he felt no one respected him for his producing work on it, regardless of how much the films earned at the box office while also wanting to work on other projects. Paramount supported the decision as they were aware of the decline in popularity of slasher films at the time of its release. Even though this was just still before Nightmare on Elm Street came out almost a half a year later. As a result, the film was marketed as Final Chapter to ensure it as such. And makeup artist Tom Savini, who worked on the first film, returned because he wanted to help kill off Jason, whom he helped create. So, let's go ahead and get started. Police clean up the grounds and Jason Voorhees' body, believed to be dead, is taken to the morgue. Jason spontaneously revives and escapes from the cold storage at the hospital, murdering the coroner, Alex Axel Burns, with a hacksaw and gutting nurse Robbie Morgan with a scalpel. The following day, a group of teenagers drive to Crystal Lake for the weekend. The group consists of Paul, his girlfriend Sam, Virgin Sarah, and her boyfriend Doug, Awkward Jimmy, and Jokester Ted. On the way, the group comes across Pamela Voorhees' tombstone and a hitchhiker whom Jason soon kills. The teens arrive and meet neighbors Trish Jarvis, her 12-year-old brother Tommy, and the family dog Gordon. While going for a walk the next day, the teens meet twin sisters Tina and Terry and go skinny dipping with them. Trish and Tommy happen upon the scene and Trish is invited to a party taking place that night. Afterward, when their car breaks down, Trish and Tommy are helped out by a young man named Rob Villa. They take him to their house, where he meets their mother. Tommy shows him several monster masks he made before Rob leaves to go camping. Later that night, the teens begin the party. A jealous Sam sees Tina flirting with Paul and leaves. She goes out to the lake where Jason impales her from under a rat. When Paul goes out to look for her, he is harpooned in the groin. Terry tries to leave the party early, but Jason stabs her in a, her with a spear before she can get on her bike. Mrs. Jarvis arrives home and discovers the power is out. While searching for her children and Gordon, she is killed off screen. Which we would see the aftermath in a deleted scene that was thrown on the cutting room floor. If you got the film on physical media, I've got it. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've seen it. Now then... 
Oh, yes. Trish and Tommy soon real soon arrive and realize their mother's mission, so Trish goes to search for her and finds Rob's campsite. It is revealed that Rob is the brother of Sandra. Dear. Rob further explains to her that Jason is still alive and that he came to Crystal Lake to avenge his sister's death. Worried about Tommy's safety, Trish and Rob return to the house. After sleeping with Tina, Jimmy goes downstairs to get a ball of wine and Jason pins his hand with a corkscrew before striking his face with a meat cleaver. Tina looks out a window upstairs and finds that her sister's bike is still there. Jason then bursts through the window and throws her to her death, crashing onto the car. While Stone's head watches stag films with a film projector, he gets too close to the projector screen and is stabbed in the head with a kitchen knife from the other side. Jason then goes upstairs where Doug and Sarah finish making love in the shower. After Sarah leaves, Jason kills Doug by crushing his head against the, sow the shower tile. When Sarah screams upon finding Doug's body, she tries to escape but gets a double bit axe through her chest. Now for the ending. You know the procedure. If I say in the sub this video, go to the description box below. Fast forward to the time below. As I start counting down, if you've seen the movie already, please continue. Okay, you've been warned. Trish, Robin, Gordon go next door to investigate and discover the teen's bodies. Gordon flees and Jason kills Rob in the basement as Trish runs home, taking Rob's machete. She and Tommy barricade the house, but Jason breaks in and chases them into Tommy's room. Trish lures Jason out of the house and escapes, then returns and is devastated told him that Tommy did not run away. She senses Jason behind her and tries to fight him off with the machete, but is overpowered. Having disguised himself to look like Jason as a child, Tommy distracts him long enough for Trish to hit him with the machete, but she merely whacks off his mask. As Trish stands horrified at Jason's deformed face, Tommy takes the machete and strikes it and the side of his skull causing him to collapse to the floor and split his head up high impact. When Tommy notices that Jason's fingers are slightly moving, he continues to hack at his body, yelling, DIE! 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 while Trish repeatedly yells out his name. At the hospital, Tommy visits Trish. Disturbed, he rushes in and embraces her. End of story. So, what did I think of... Friday the 13th, the final chapter. I think it was good. It's a good way to start off this here trilogy of Tommy Jarvis. I think it's probably the best of the film series, in my opinion. The film was released on this day, April 4th, 13th, in 1984. Henceforth, today is the 40th anniversary of the film. Though the film got dissed and what have you, it has respectively come to be considered one of the stronger entries in the series. Despite being billed as the final, final film, its success prompted another film the, one year later in Friday the 13th, A New Begin, and then Jason Lives, and so on. Anyway, it made $33 million at the U.S. box office, making it the fourth most attended the film of the franchise. They have ha Harry Manfredini back on board to do the score, just like the other film. He does an exceptionally good job on this and what have you. The story was, or should I say, the screenplay was written by Barney Cohen, who the previous year actually wrote an episode of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, which was Evil Seed. Uh, yes, you heard me correctly. Uh, on that. Anyway, this, this, like I said, Harry Manfredini's soundtrack to this was score was so incredible and why I really enjoyed it. The film sits at twenty four percent of Rotten Tomatoes, saying as lumberingly single minded as a Thomas L. star, the film adds an earth road entry to an increasingly labored franchise. Well, Cisco and Eber berated the film on their show with a former demia and an immoral and reprehensible piece of trash. 
while Scott Mislow summarized Ebert's criticism as calling it a cynical retread of the earlier films, knowing that the film instead attempts to kill off the series while focusing more on characterization and gore. In a series retrospective, Kyle Anderson of Entertainment Weekly ranked it the best Friday the 13th film, complementing both its narrative and kills. Well, yes, well, the story's not too bad, and I do think the kills were pretty good. I mean, might, some of them might not be too close to being gory, but still pretty good, though. For our cast and what have you, we have Kimberly Beck as Trish. She was good. Pretty underrated final girl. Corey Feldman, who a few months later that same year would also play Pete in Gremlins. And, of course, he also went on to appear in Stand By Me and The Goonies and several others. Oh, yeah, and The Lost Boys. He played Tommy, was very good. Let's see here. E. Eric Anderson played Rob. Good um, character. Uh, Barbara Howard played Sarah. She was good. Peter Barnum played Doug. Crispin Glover. Yes, um, who the following year would be in Back to the Future. As the young version of George McFly, Marty's dad. Alan Hayes played Paul, not bad. Joan Freeman played Mrs. Jarvis, she was good. Judy Aronson played Samantha, she was good. Camila and Carrie Moore played Tina and Terry, they were both very good. Lawrence Mon Monison played Ted, yeah, he's probably one of the more most annoying characters and he's nuts and what have you, but he's kind of my kind of annoying character. You know what I'm saying? Let's see here. Bruce Mahler played Axel. Lisa Freeman played Nurse Morgan. Bonnie Hellman played the Hitchhiker. And while even though he's uncredited, Jason was played by the late great Ted White, who I think was a very good Jason. I like that. Anyway, Friday the 13th, the final chapter, I think it's just so much fun, what have you. I agree with what some people say. This is definitely the best of the franchise, and why have you. I don't care what anybody else says about it. It is good. I mean, I liked it a little bit more than the other, the first three films, or even later films. Well, even though Jason Lives comes right up there in the top five, you know, Along with the first, this and the other three, first three. <laughs> but of the whole, I think Friday the 13th, the final chapter, just has a lot to offer. Great cast and really good characters. Kills were fine, except I know some were done, one was off screen. And it did have some a pretty good direction from Joseph Zio. And we did have Harry Manfredini back on board to do a good score, just like always. So overall, Friday the 13th, the final chapter, is not too bad. Would I recommend it? I would say hell yeah. I would say give it a one-time watch if you're a hardcore completionist and what have you. Uh, but this is one film I definitely would recommend you come back and watch it every time. Usually if I do watch Friday the 13th, if I can't find the, the films that came out to this, I, don't, I always watch the first four films. So Friday the 13th, the final chapter, it's, an, it's a good film, and I still like it. It's one of the greats. So what did you think of Friday the 13th, the final chapter? Let me know in the comments section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe. And be a part of the Big D Nation and continue to help support my channel and make it grow by watching my vids and check and what have you. Tell your friends about my channel. Join me next time when I bring to you a spoiler-free review of Woody Woodpecker Goes to Camp. So if you like this, consider checking out my re-reviews of the first two Friday films. The upper left-hand corner is my re-review re of Friday the 13th from 1980. The upper right hand corner is my re review of Friday the 13th Part 2 from 1981. Or if you would like, maybe. Hmm. How should I put it to you this way? Another pretty good horror sequel. You can check out my re review of Halloween 2 from 1981, which is pretty good. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., 
then I'm your guy. So thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big V saying see ya.